Betsy, this is such a hallmark Trump crime because he doesn't deny the facts, especially the criminal, the ones that make it criminal. Doesn't deny taking the documents, doesn't deny keeping the documents, doesn't deny the fact of the photos of where the documents were held. His only twist on it, and it, you can see it sort of making the, the, the smoke start to come out of the ears of people like Sean Hannity when he interviews about it, is he says his version of when you're president, they let you do it. That's it. Yeah, that's right. And that's one of the things, <clears throat> excuse me, that Jack Smith highlighted in the draft jury instructions that he wrote, of course, following an order from Judge Cannon that he simultaneously argued was borderline nonsensical. In one of these draft jury directions that Smith proposed, he basically said the jury will be directed to find Trump not guilty if they decide that these are personal records. Oh, and by the way, Trump's lawyers are arguing that everything that left the White House under his watch and didn't go to the National Archives is a personal record. From the standpoint of, of Jack Smith's team, this is an unwinnable situation, and the judge might as well, if she really believes this and really wants to stick to her guns on the legal analysis that she is very seriously entertaining, might as well just call the entire thing off. And clearly, in the view of the Justice Department, that would be preposterous. And in the view of a host, a whole host of legal experts, including Bill Barr, that would be preposterous. This is where, for Jack Smith and for his team, they are in a very unusual situation. And of course, that's why we're seeing this unusual pre gaming of, again, an unusual appellate strategy. From Trump's standpoint, making this an argument about the law rather than about the facts is helpful for two reasons. First, of course, it certainly seems that in the view of him and his lawyers, the facts are not super helpful. And second, having this become a drawn out legal fight only ratchets up the likelihood that this thing won't go to trial before Election Day. Of course, the complexity for Jack Smith and his team is once they file an appeal, once they go to the 11th Circuit to try to get involved, that also extends the timeline. And all of this makes the upcoming hush money payments trial that's scheduled to start this month in Manhattan all the more important because at this point in time where we sit, it's possible that that's going to be the only time Trump will go on trial before Election Day. <clears throat> David Jolly. <laughs> Harry Lippman is a lawyer. He lives by a code. Betsy is a journalist. She lives by a code. You and I are not hemmed in by a code. <laughs> what is happening here is that the judicial system is now bending itself around a wannabe autocrat who has successfully corrupted norms and traditions of the criminal justice system that exist to protect the defendant as a brazen and out in the open political strategy. And do not believe me, and I promise I won't throw my papers that prove triggering for everyone that I'm happy watches on the right. Hi, guys. But the notion that we're covering this as a legal story is ludicrous because Trump isn't dealing with this as a legal problem. He is playing Jack Smith and Aileen Cannon as political players. And I wonder if you think that our institutions have any muscles to fight back. Yeah, and Nicole, I'm so glad you framed it that way. We're kind of reading each other's mind on this one. <laughs> Look, I would say there's not only legal strategy and a political strategy, but there's an autocratic strategy. And I think that's at the root of, of your comment. Look, legally, what Donald Trump is essentially asking Cannon to do is to render the Presidential Records Act meaningless. Meaningless. It really doesn't apply to him. That's, that's the basics of what he's asking the judge to rule. And he's asking the judge to do it in a way that would then lock out federal prosecutors from any opportunity to appeal, which is why you saw this, this rush of a, of a motion last night by Jack Smith. Because if Eileen Cannon decides to instruct the jury that the PRA doesn't apply as it's written, there, it, it game's over. And so what does that mean in terms of the broader questions and conversations around autocracy? It's this. We have, we have largely seen during the initial Trump term, you know, one of the comforts, although it's been a soft one, is that the courts largely held. It was painful at times. It wasn't always consistent, but the courts largely held in checking executive power and checking executive authority. You can even say on January 6th, the Senate held and Mike Pence held. But if Cannon moves in this direction, what you're actually seeing is a court begin to fall court began to topple, a court began to participate in this autocratic movement that Donald Trump is unleashing on the country. 
That's the blinking red light. That, that really means when Donald Trump says, I can shoot somebody on Fifth Avenue or the law doesn't apply to me, it's a court saying, you're right, Donald Trump. You're right, Mr. President. Let me show you the red carpet back to the Oval Office. It's actually illegally. This is a tricky issue to really understand. Harry did a great job. Thank you for that. But in terms of the autocratic movement in the United States, this little legal decision holds a lot of import. Well, and, and let me just follow up with you, David Jolly. I mean, it doesn't even matter if we get to that point or not, right? It doesn't even matter if the Presidential Records Act is viewed the way Trump wants it viewed. The fact that she's not ruled at all so that Jack Smith can't appeal a ruling is not lost on her. And I would, I would, till the end of time, like to know whose idea that was. Not sure if it was hers. Maybe it was. Um, I'm not sure I've seen a lawyer articulate a legal reason for not ruling at all. But what do you make of the success in gumming up the, the legal process? Again, not over disputed facts. These facts are not disputed by Donald Trump. They're not disputed by Bill Barr. They're not disputed by Evan Corcoran, who's a key witness in this, who was one of Trump's lawyers while he committed the crimes of obstructing this very investigation. So this one is, is a perfect one to, to frankly, it doesn't really dispute any of the facts of, of the elect, of the insurrection case either. But where are we? If even before we get to what you just laid out, it's simply delayed to a point where there won't be a trial before the election. Yeah, and look, so Donald Trump's strategy when it comes to judgeships, aided and abetted by Mitch McConnell and Senate Republicans, is working. On policy, he got the Dobbs decision, and we've heard him talk about his judges on the Supreme Court, Kavanaugh and Barrett in particular, that they'll decide the right way. You better believe that Donald Trump thinks that this judge, Cannon, has been put in place to decide the right way, and done so as part of the coordinated Republican effort around judges. What does it mean in terms of the overall strategy to return to the White House, it is a strategy of delay or in this case, and this is why this is so severe compared to the others. This case seemed to be lumbering along. All of a sudden, this might be the case that gets tossed out by a federal judge mm. and it's over before it gets started. We haven't seen that. We really haven't seen that. And that is a victory lap for Donald Trump and a motivator for Republicans to just continue to ignore the judiciary and expect that they'll eventually fall in line with Trump and Trumpism. Well, and Betsy, let me give you the last word, because what, what David just said is, is absolutely the flashing red light on the national security side, because what this is about is something that journalists like yourself and, and, and the folks at The New York Times and The Washington Post reported out day after day, and that was complete indifference to the sanctity of classified documents, of the work of the intelligence community, of the sanctity of the stars on the wall of the CIA. And what this is about is about the handling of state secrets. What are the concerns in, in national security circles if the scenario David Jolly laid out comes to pass? Well, it just suggests that any future president who thinks about uh, America's most closely guarded secrets the same way Trump does would be able to treat them the same way Trump has with impunity. And one piece of this case that uh, I can tell you just drives low-level rank-and-file national security and intelligence community officials nuts is the simple fact that setting aside all this legal, all these legal issues that Trump is having, there's the very real public safety and national security reasons that these types of materials are kept so closely held rather than being parked next to toilets in uh, country clubs. The reason for that is that people's lives are at stake. People help the U.S. intelligence community by taking great personal risks. The people in the intelligence community often operate in dangerous situations under great personal risks. And to treat the product of that work like it's something that can be cavalierly strewn about is just uh, deeply chilling and disturbing to the people who do that work themselves. Hey everyone, MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.